Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. I have said before on this channel that the ultimate approach to sexual transmutation, which is the point of retaining your seed. By the way, you will not retain your seed for very long, if you do not practice sexual transmutation rigorously and consciously and intentionally. The highest form of sexual transmutation is the pursuit of wisdom. Wisdom is the God-man Jesus Christ. And here in this passage from the Old Testament, wisdom speaks as a woman. A corollary to this. Jesus Christ is wisdom and wisdom is a woman? Yes. Have you heard of the Song of Solomon, the great erotic love poem of the Old Testament, which appears to be a very specific and literal description of sexual congress? It talks about a woman being a fountain. They knew about female ejaculation in the Bible? Yes, they did. They know all kinds of detailed things about lovemaking between a man and a woman. What do the Holy Fathers of the Orthodox Church say about that book? There is a man and a woman and their friends. And there's this wonderful courtship and lovers looking for their trysts and desiring each other. And according to the Holy Fathers of Orthodoxy, Jesus Christ is the woman in the Song of Songs, in the Song of Solomon. I was shocked. Having been raised as a Protestant, I assumed, well, Jesus Christ loves his church. The man must be Christ. The woman is church. No! The woman is Jesus Christ. To be desired by you. Spirituality is classically written by men for men. Men teach women. That's the procedure. So if you as a man would pursue wisdom, which is the ultimate sexual transmutation, and it is indeed sexual and erotic in nature, or the Song of Solomon would not be, as St. John Cassian said, the ultimate and final degree. That is theosis in the Old Testament. It is the Song of Solomon. You 
you must pursue Jesus Christ the very same way you would sexually pursue the most beautiful woman that you love the most in all the world. That is true sexual transmutation, the pursuit of wisdom. St. Maximus the Confessor understands this. And he writes, The origin and consummation of every man's salvation is wisdom, which initially produces fear, but when perfected gives rise to loving desire, divine eros. Or, if you will, God's love, which is erotic and holy. The Greek word for love, which the Holy Fathers use to describe the chaste, intimate union of God with the soul and body of a man or woman, is the word eros, from which we get the English word erotic, which we usually think of as describing physical, sexual congress between a man and a woman. In Holy Orthodoxy, eros, the erotic, is the description of the chaste, celibate union of God, which is consummated in your heart. Or rather, initially and providentially, wisdom manifests itself for our sake as fear, so as to make us who aspire to wisdom desist from evil. But ultimately it exists in its natural state for its own sake as loving desire, so as to fill with spiritual mirth those who have abandoned all existing things in order to dwell with it. To those who do not long for it, wisdom is fear, because of the loss which they suffer through their flight from it. But in those who cleave to it, wisdom is loving desire, promoting an inner state of joyous activity, for wisdom creates fear, delivering a person from the passions by making him apprehensive of punishment. And it also produces loving desire. Loving lust, translated another way. A word which the Lord Jesus Christ himself uses in the New Testament when describing the first divine liturgy, the first Eucharist served on Pascha, or rather the Friday when he died for our sake, the Thursday before that, the Thursday before Pascha, was the first Eucharist. The Lord spoke of it to his disciples, saying, I have lusted to eat this Passover meal. He lusted to give himself to them. When Jesus Christ, his body and blood, enters the mouth of an Orthodox Christian, he penetrates us. He enters you. And there you are in the feminine position. He's in the masculine. He lusted to penetrate, to enter, and yes, to become. For them to become his body. Just as when a man and a woman are married, says St. Paul, he owns her body. She owns his body. They no longer own their own flesh. They become one flesh. Which is to say, a man owns his wife's body. A woman owns her husband's body. This is consensual slavery. Make no mistake. And it must be a loving desire, as the one that the Lord expressed was. He lusted to eat this meal, the first Holy Eucharist, he desired, he lusted. The word is lust in the New Testament. That's what St. Maximus is referring to here. 
for wisdom creates fear, delivering a person from the passions by making him apprehensive of punishment. And it also produces loving desire, accustoming the noose through the acquisition of the virtues to behold the blessings held in store for us, writes St. Maximus the Confessor. <laughs>